This is a video review of the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system is a network of membranes, including the nuclear membrane, ER, vesicles, Golgi, more vesicles, and membranes or organelle membranes, um, cell membrane or organelle membranes, that are involved in making, modifying, and transporting proteins and lipids around the cell. In freshman bio, we learn a lot about what the function of the organelles are. But in AP Bio, we need to apply that to how the organelles work together, like the mitochondria provides energy for this to happen. And we need to think about what would happen if a piece of this process was not working correctly. So let's start our review in the nucleus, inside the nuclear membrane. And remember, everything highlighted in orange is made up of a biomembrane, so a phospholipid bilayer plus embedded proteins. In the nucleus, we have the DNA. You can think of your DNA, right, which is DNA, double helix wrapped around these histone proteins, as something that codes for all of your genes. Every cell in your body has a full set of DNA except for your gametes, your sperm and egg cell. So every cell in your body has the same DNA. How do cells then look different, act different, function differently? Well, it's because although every cell in your body has the exact same DNA, we read different chapters of the DNA depending on which cell type we're talking about. Okay, so let's say we're type, talking about a type of cell that needs a specific membrane protein to talk to other cells. So maybe it's an immune cell. We're gonna read the chapter of the DNA that codes for one specific gene and we're going to transcribe that gene into our mRNA here. So this is our mRNA. mRNA codes for one gene. So all of a sudden we're a little bit specialized instead of coding for, instead of making copies of all of the genes in the DNA, we're only gonna make copies of the genes we need for this specific cell type. Again, this process of going from DNA to mRNA is called transcription. In the nucleolus, which is a region in the nucleus, parts of the ribosome are being made at the same time. So now what's going to happen is, and let me zoom in a little bit here, pardon the beep, okay, is the mRNA is going to leave the nucleus through the nuclear pores. The parts of the ribosome are also gonna leave the nucleus. Some of the ribosomes are gonna be free floating and they're gonna make proteins for inside the cell. Other ribosomes are gonna to attach to mRNA and attach to the rough ER. So let's talk about one of these attached ribosomes right here. This attached ribosome right here, attached to the ER, is going to have an mRNA attached to it as well. Now this mRNA is like the copy of the directions for this gene. This mRNA will move through the ribosome. tRNAs will bring amino acids. So we have amino acids all over the place, right? When we digested our food, we have all these amino acids. So we're gonna bring the amino acids in and we're gonna make a polypeptide, right? The primary structure of the protein. So the polypeptide is made on the ribosome using the direction from the mRNA. mRNA is not turning into the polypeptide. mRNA provides the code for what amino acids to bring in. So now we have our polypeptide and that's happening on the ribosome. Now in the rough ER, a number of things can happen to this polypeptide. One, it can fold. So let's say our polypeptide folds up here to become a protein. Two, Okay. things can be added to it. So let's say we add a small carbohydrate group to our protein. All of a sudden we have a mature protein, which we're calling this whole thing a glycoprotein. But we need to get this glycoprotein to the cell membrane. Fortunately for us, our endoplasmic reticulum, our rough ER, is made up of phospholipids. So we can put this glycoprotein in the corner of the ER and that corner can break off and become a vesicle. And these transport vesicles are made up of phospholipids. So this glycoprotein is now in this transport vesicle, which is going to transport it all the way to the Golgi. At the Golgi, we might modify the proteins more, but we'll also tag them for delivery. Where are they going to go? So let's say we have our glycoprotein here, and we want it to become a membrane protein. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tag it. We're gonna say, okay, you're gonna go to the zip code 22030, which happens to be the cell membrane. 
That then allows that protein to be transported by a vesicle again to the cell membrane. And now that protein has become part of the phospholipid bilayer here. It's become a membrane protein. So that's one possible fate of our um, protein that we made in this rough ER. What else can happen though? Okay, let's say, let's go all the way back. And let's say um, we are gonna make a, um, in, and then we'll make an antibody. An antibody is a protein that fights infection. So this antibody protein is going to be coded for by a gene in the DNA. We'll copy that gene into mRNA. That different mRNA will attach to a ribosome, right? Again, amino acids will be brought in and we'll make a protein. And if we have an antibody protein, it kind of folds up in this Y shape, okay? So here's our antibody. Our antibody, to do any good, has to leave the cell. It has to be exported from the cell in order to fight infection. So once again, this antibody is going to be put into a vesicle, okay, that came off of the ER, and it's going to be transported to the Golgi. The Golgi at this point is going to tag this protein differently because instead of being part of the cell membrane, it's going to be exported from the cell. So maybe this protein gets the tag 22031, which means, hey, let's export this protein. Again, it's going to get in a vesicle, but instead of joining with the cell membrane, it's going to be exported from the cell membrane via exocytosis. And all of a sudden, these antibody proteins are going to leave the immune cell so that they can go fight infection. So exported proteins, um, examples often include things like antibodies or hormones like insulin or glucagon that help regulate our blood sugar level. So we can export proteins as well. This endomembrane system is amazing because it's all powered by the energy from the mitochondria, right? And it's very specific where we can send proteins. One last example would be, let's say we made a digestive enzyme. This digestive enzyme could be very useful, for example, inside the lysosome. So once again, we take this digestive enzyme by a vesicle to the Golgi. And once it gets to the Golgi, it's tagged. Uh, let's do 22032. And that is the location of the lysosome, right? So again, it's taken by a vesicle to the lysosome. It's dumped inside the lysosome so it can be a digestive enzyme. So all of these organelles are working together to move proteins around. Let's say the ref ER, the Golgi, or the cytoplasm, I'm not cytoplasm, sorry, cell membrane need more phospholipids. Well, the smooth ER helps detoxify things um, it also can store things, but most importantly, it makes lipids, phospholipids, and hormones. So the smooth ER can butt off empty vesicles of phospholipids and transfer them all around the cell to the rough ER, to the Golgi, to the cell membrane, wherever phospholipids are needed. So all these organelles are working together to move things around the cell. And that's why when we talk about this pathway in the endomembrane system, we're saying, hey, things are being transported in a path through these organelles in order to help the cell make correct cell parts and become specialized and in order for, to help the cell maintain homeostasis. Um, this happens in the eukaryotic cells. It happens in animal cells. It happens in plant cells, okay? Transport also happens in prokaryotic cells, but remember, they don't have an endomembrane system. There's no nucleus around their DNA, right? Um, there's just a cell membrane here. So their transport um, the cells are much smaller, and there's only one cell, so we can't have as much specialization. But transport still does occur, right? Um, and again, they don't have all those organelles to do reactions, so they have to fold in their cell membrane to do reactions. Um, but, right, that's what makes the eukaryotic cells so interesting, is how all these organelles work together, this interdependency leading to homeostasis. All right, thanks for watching.